All right, guys, should be able to hear me now. Hopefully you can. I do not have my uh, lav mic on. I just have the normal microphone. What's up, Peter's Arcade? Let me know, can you hear me? Somebody confirm in chat. All right, guys, should be able to hear me now. Hopefully you can. Okay, there might be a slight delay, but you guys should be able to hear me now. Pretty sure. Awesome. So, I don't have my lab mic on. What happened was, I used it. I'm doing some footage, of course. I'm trying to record some content, and I forgot to charge it. So, it's actually charging on the side. I may grab it, grab it like mid-through or something. But, uh, yeah, it's good to be back on. I actually have uh, the thumbs up. The kids are out. They're actually there at their aunt's house staying over and uh yep so no kids means streaming so <laughs> nobody's interrupting so it's a little late i had some technical difficulties believe it or not i started around 11 p.m eastern time now it's about 1 a.m but uh getting into the swing of things i accidentally killed the program that i used to stream so that took a little while to patch up but good to go looks like there's about seven people here uh, like I said, you can even see it on screen here. I have my phone. That's how I'm uh, reading your thing. So it might be a slight delay from when I talk and when I answer your questions. What's up, Mike? I see Mike Carrington just popped in. <laughs> By the way, Mike, I totally owe you uh, a t-shirt. So email me um, at Dell's Arcade. Uh, because I was adding up all the crap that you've uh, donated to the channel. I'm like, man, Mike, can you can like buy a car with the amount of money you spent. So I really appreciate it. Um, what I may do in the future, um, and you're kind of exempt from this because, uh, wait, I just walked away. I forgot I don't have the mic on. But um, you're exempt from this. You're not allowed to donate in the future. But um, I'm probably going to have a fundraiser or something to get a 4, 4K camera for the channel. So uh, we'll see how that goes. So for now, I think the money is going to be spent on the new RTX 3080 or 3070 so I can upgrade my editing rig because right now it's really powerful, but the video card is terrible. It's a 1060 in there and it bottlenecks all the time. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I did upgrade the avatars for everyone. Uh, the backers now have avatars next to their names, so depending how long you've been on, you get different icons. Uh, I believe if you're here more than like a year or something like that, uh, you get Mario, but there's the Dell's Arcade little icon you can get. You can get, uh, let's see, Galaga, Ms. Pac-Man, there's a whole bunch of them. So that's if, you know, if you're a member of the channel, I think it's like five bucks a month or something. But, uh, you know, it all comes out in the wash. I basically put everything I have into the channel. Um, have a lot of cool announcements coming up. Um, like I said, I'm working on it right now. I actually um, kind of took a step back with Gaplus. I decided to remove all the components and the wiring that I did in order to paint everything black inside because I decided to bling it out on the inside as well. So you guys are going to really like that. You'll see it in the future. Um, it's going to look really cool, very unique. I'm having some custom stuff done. So uh, yeah, it's going to be really cool. So that's taking a little longer than normal. What's up, G.A. Roger Cade? I say Roger Cade, right? <laughs> Go, Roger. Um, anyway, uh, so, and Julian just popped in. And that's it. So there's about 12 people here. What I'm going to do, um, you guys have seen, or maybe you haven't, but there's another, I put a link in the description, but basically there's another Outrun Enhance that I did in MAME. It's like a special build of MAME that I was beta testing. Um, I've had this running right now. This is actually on hardware finally. It's the final version. It's 2.01 The one I showed before was 2.0 It was kind of in beta. So this is the final revision um, I had it on my hardware. I modified uh, my PCB just by moving a jumper. It was simple to do uh, But it gives you some stuff. So I don't know if you want me to run through that Just let me know in chat I can go to the options and show you what the differences are or I can play a game and then show you the differences Whatever you want to do, but it's a little different 
Um, it has old and new tracks. Um, let me just make sure. I'm gonna open it up now actually. I forgot to check to see if I have it. So let me do that now while we're waiting for people to get in. So game settings. And I do not have my subwoofer turned on by the way. I completely forgot about it. I should have done that. Uh, but I did modify this outrun to have a sub on it. Uh, it was very easy. It's non-destructive. It actually has outputs for a sub in the back. Uh, I had a video on that as well, but let me see here. So, advertise sound on one off. I'm trying to think of what I had to do. I think it's under extra settings. Nope, that was the wrong button there. Let's try it again. Okay, so course layout should be new. That's what I wanted. Um, old actually has the Japanese tracks. Um, where they go in different order. So if you go left, usually there's those arches and stuff. If you use the old version, it actually has a different course on the left. It's pretty cool. But I'm doing new. Timing fixes, I'm leaving off. Infinite time, obviously, I'm not putting any of the cheats on. Disable traffic, off-road tires, grippy tires, all that stuff. Automatic gears, I'm leaving off. And preview music on. Okay, so I'll leave it like that. I think it's good to go. And traffic should be normal and timer is also normal cool thanks Mike I just saw your donation you never listen to me <laughs> but that's really cool uh, it does show up on my phone nice and orange I don't know if you can see that but I'm actually checking it out right here and that's uh, Mike he just donated one it's pretty cool so um, yeah so I'm seeing in the chat um, Roger Cade says to play the game first. That's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm just not going to go through it. I'm just making sure the settings are correct. So let me go back here. And I will now exit. Oh, I went backwards by mistake. Okay. Now let me just adjust the sound. See, hopefully that's a good volume for you guys. If it's too loud, I could always change to the lab mic later. All right, so I'm gonna select uh, a new cruising line, which is another. Yes, ready? If that's too loud. Let me know if it's not loud enough. Let me know. All right, so hopefully you guys can see that. It looks good to me. What I may do too is turn on the contrast on my phone. It's not as bright. So believe it or not, I still need to finish this restoration that I did, or this cleaning up of this cab. I still need to put team molding on there. And everybody's like, yeah, you could just slap it on. It's so easy. What are you waiting for? Actually, I have to kind of repair the bottom with some Bondo. Uh, but I'm trying to use some other stuff that is, it's like this clay, almost like Bondo, but just not as, uh, uh, it's just not as uh, smelly. <laughs> okay, cool. If it sounds good, I'm glad. So you're going to notice if I even pass this board, I don't know if I'm going to pass it. I have about 13 seconds. I might make it. But you'll see when it says checkpoint. It'll have like a little indicator on the center that tells you your track time. And that's a new feature. Oh, I don't think I made it. Nope, almost. So we'll try again. Now that I have everything set. All right. So did I answer anything? Nope. All right, here we go. Let's do another track here. Let's do this one here. Get ready. I have to say it takes a little getting used to listening to different music while you're playing. But it's still cool.
I'll try to concentrate this time. <laughs> I was talking way too much before. If you guys have any questions about anything, always let me know. If you have a question about content and what I'm working on. Uh, like I said, I have a big announcement. I actually uh, obtained a game. Not a grail for me, but it was still a really good deal, like, uh, collection-wise, I guess. Uh, so, you know, I gave you guys a hint. It's a, I needed the Gottlieb Milestar J-Rock board. So, could be any one of those games on there. I'm still not revealing it just yet. I'm still looking for parts. But, uh, basically I got a pretty much near mint shell that I'm working on right now. So we'll see how that works out. It's really hard to traffic. These guys are bastards right now. <laughs> Set to normal. They eat big kids from down under. So it's probably freezing over there now, right? Is it winter? We just had our summer, but you guys have the winter during that time. But we're getting into fall now, so it's starting to get a little milder out. Or less mild, I should say. Texting and driving is not good. And that's what I'm doing by reading these, uh, this stuff that you guys are typing, but it's only a game, it's not real life, so. So I didn't make it again. What I may do, um, if you guys want to see the endings, I could actually go into unlimited time mode if you want. That's another feature of this new outrun. Yeah, let's do that. It doesn't let you enter your name, but um, you can get to the end. It used to be able to keep high score, but then we felt it was kind of cheating. So on the beta test, uh, I guess we all kind of discussed, we said, you know, it's better not to have uh, <laughs> that setting in there to make it unlimited and then be able to save your high score. So uh, where is it here? Advertise sound. I think it's under extra settings. There it is. And infinite time I want to turn on. That way we can see the endings. So I'll try to do all of them. I'll do A, B, C, D, E. Um, now I can get out of this. And get out of that. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Force feedback equals real life. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do this one. Sunset Rush, one of my favorites. So a history of the uh, music, Sunset Rush is actually from Turbo Outrun. So he managed to export that and put it into and inject it into this game. So this is from the second game, which is Outrun 2. Well, not Outrun 2, but Turbo Outrun. And the other two tracks are from, I believe, the 3DS versions of Outrun that he actually uh, exported and put him into here. He's a big fan of those games. Chris White, he's the author of this uh, hack here. Or Enhanced Edition, I should say. So I'm working on getting a Turbo Outrun board. I'm actually working on fixing it. So, I'll get there eventually, but um, I want to put Jim Riddle's uh, switcher in there because he has a switcher now that lets you play Outrun and Turbo Outrun in the same cabinet. You just hit the test switch to switch between the two. So that'd be kind of nice having both in the same cabinet. I'm flying here right now. I'm going maximum speed here. These trucks are kind of easy. Yeah, they're a bunch of bastards with this uh, <laughs> Set to normal, I might set it to easy, but it doesn't matter. I have unlimited time. You can see up here, there is no timer at all. It's totally removed from that again. So 
what have you guys been in, up to like uh, during this COVID? Me, I've still been working, working full time. You know, I do broadcasting and stuff, working live TV. Um, so, you know, just keeping busy with that. Still working there, doing my thing. Um, you know, being careful. They're really strict at work where we only have live essential personnel at work. No one else is allowed in the building. And, uh, you know, it's been pretty good. I have great hours, which is awesome. I work about three days a week with four days off, which is pretty great. Even then, I still can't get enough stuff done with this hobby, though. <laughs> yeah, I keep forgetting I don't have to worry about time, so I'm trying to rush, and I should just go the whole way. Uh, you know what, Mike, a JAMA switcher does not work with OutRun because OutRun is not JAMA. OutRun does not have an edge connector. It actually has these little, uh, I guess, uh, pins, receivers, or female ends, and then they have proprietary connectors that go from the cabinet, which is about, let me think, one, two, three, four, there's about five or six connectors that connect the game board to the power, to the controls, all that kind of stuff. So it's pretty proprietary, but he actually got all the connectors that were needed, got some feedback from the forums, and uh, basically built a two-in-one switcher specifically for Hopper. So I think that's pretty neat. I think it's $150 if you want to buy it. Uh, it might be out. I don't know if it's still in beta or not, but he did contact me. Um, you know, about if I wanted to buy one or whatever, but I'm not quite ready yet because I still need a working Turbo Opera board. I have three broken ones at the moment, and I started working on them. I just got to see if they'll, uh, you know, I have to de-suicide them, but then there's still other issues with the graphics board. Uh, CPU board usually, I believe it's fine, just the graphics board has issues, so I got to mess around with that. Just again, you know, there's so many projects that I have. I'm trying to keep myself focused on what I gotta do first. And I think Gapless is the one I'm focused on right now. I did a lot of work on that today, repainted it inside, not on the outside. Um, but it's gonna be worth it once it's all done. I would say the inside's probably gonna look almost as good as the outside. Gonna, I'm gonna bling it out. It's gonna look like a, uh, not really like a PC, but very similar. You know, you get those all high end PCs with liquid cooling and all that. Uh, mine's just gonna have some custom stuff in there or that, and some lighting that I'm doing. So I figured I'd go all out, have some fun with it. So that is coming soon. I'm not all about, you know, shooting an episode. I kind of just think about it, edit it well and then release one episode with everything in it. Instead of uh, 15 episodes with three hours each. But I enjoy it, that's all that matters, right? I enjoy what I'm doing and then it shows to my viewers. Certainly not about the money. I actually demonetized, uh, well, sort of. I removed all the mid-roll ads on every single uh, one on my channel because I, I didn't really like the way YouTube kind of, you know, I worked so hard editing everything and then YouTube just disrupts it with a ad out of the blue. So. Hey Mike, by the way, I don't know if you know, but I have a, a trainer on right now with unlimited time. So that's probably why it looks like I'm good. <laughs> so this is the first ending, they're all different. Some are great, like that one he just got dropped because the chick came by and they looked at her and dropped him. Alright, so let's do B next. So I'll have to turn right at the last minute. Let's try it now. 
Get ready. I'm choosing the classic music this time. And by the way, I've been having a lot of fun playing that Milestar board in my JAMA cabinet. Um, you know, I'm not going to tell you what game it is yet, but uh, I do enjoy all of the games on there. Um, I haven't played like, well, I haven't played like Cuber or Crawl or any of them in a long time. So uh, I had a lot of fun with Crawl because what's cool about that board is that even though it's a vertical game, you can play it in a horizontal cabinet because he actually rotates the screen for you and the controls and it actually looks pretty decent. So running that on a horizontal monitor like my Smash TV looks pretty good. That's the hardest part of this first level, is that curve right there. I'm going to go right eventually, and then I have to go left the rest of the way. So I'm going to try to get to B. These cars are just like crazy. So there are a couple of guys that know what the game is. You know, pretty close friends that I have. Um, we've been doing something really neat uh, called Arcade Thursdays. <laughs> it's basically every Thursday we get together. We've been doing it for the last uh, couple months, actually. Maybe even three months during this whole COVID stuff. And uh, trust me, we've been fixing a lot of stuff. You know, a buddy of mine, as you saw in the last video, uh, my buddy Jason was looking for a Marble Madness because he got a System 1 cab. He did find it, it was broken, and during those, uh, you know, Arcade Thursdays, uh, man, I to make it fun. during those Arcade Thursdays, we actually um, fixed it, well, he did, you know, while we were all there, so it's kind of neat, we're fixing stuff, I had a uh, Galaxian, oh, I'm sorry, a Galaga that was broken, not working right, and we fixed that, um, you know, the connectors weren't correct, so I had to get that all settled, and I got that done. I'm changing directions on my GAP Plus slightly. I'm now going to make it a Galaga Anthology. So it's going to be GAP Plus, it's going to look like GAP Plus, it's going to have GAP Plus and everything, but I'm only going to put Galaxian, Galaga, GAP Plus, and Galaga 88. So it's going to have all four of the series in there, and that's it. So that way we keep it, you know, Themed the same. I may throw in a couple later, like uh, Time Pilot or Space Pilot, or you know, I really love Bomb Jack, so I might throw that in there. But I'm trying to keep it, you know, with the theme with all four Galagas in there. Technically, Galaxian is the first Galaga. That's why Galaga Three, also known as Gaplus, is called Galaga Three because Galaxian was first, Galaga was second, and then. Gap Plus or Galaga 3 was a third. But yeah, I did buy a Galaga 88 board. I found one for a lot of money. <laughs> They're worth about a thousand. Uh, but I found one a little less than that, like probably half of that. A little less than half. Uh, but I felt it was a good investment because uh, those boards are only going to go up in price. And it's awesome. I played it, you know, through JAMA, and it works great because it is a JAMA board. I'm trying to get this done. So maybe tomorrow I might work on uh, doing some wiring. It's funny, the vibrations are actually shaking my cell phone off. You know, um, Mike, I actually have, you know, I have it. I, I may not, I may have it like in a secret slot there. I might enable it every now and then. But I have a Raspberry Pi uh, to CGA adapter in there. It's 
so I can technically run the arrangement. You know, I just have to load it up. I have to load up the ROM, and of course it's going to be emulated, but it's uh, you know it has that CGA converter, so it goes to a CRT. But I've run everything in that cab, just testing it out with that Raspberry Pi. But then I decided, you know, I really want to keep it legit with real PCBs in there. So I kind of scrapped the uh, Raspberry Pi idea. But you never know, I may just leave it in there. Um, and then whenever I want, I can just leave it. I might just have it disabled for now. Yeah, that, that is a good game. Uh, the reason actually I didn't want it in there actually because um, I'm building that bar top, the shmup bar top, and I have it in that. And that's two players. You know, this this is actually only one player cabinet. You can't put two controls on there. So uh, I am building two control panels though. So uh, I already ordered the uh, artwork for the second one. The second one's going to be four way. That's going to have two buttons on it on each side, so that it's basically going to be a test panel that I can swap into there if I want to put in like, let's say I want to put in like the big kit or a Pac-Man or something, I'll be able to play it. So that's going to be separate and I'm using the classic GAP Plus artwork for that. Because right now I'm using the Pacific Arcades Custom. So that should be real fun. Is it? Yeah, I love this song too, Mike. Congratulations! So this is another ending we did. <laughs> so some of them are they're comical. So she gets the trophy, she didn't even drive, and he's like, what the heck? So the path I took, I think I went to D. Yeah, that's actually the shortest path. Going to D. So now let's do one more. I'm gonna go to B this time. I'm gonna try. And you hear that sound? That tuning sound, it goes like ooh, really high pitched. That's actually in the game. Um, I thought he created that himself. Uh, Chris White is the author of this enhanced kit. But that's actually in the ROMs. He found it buried in there. They just never used it. So he actually brought it back out. I'm gonna do. I think I selected this one already. Yeah, we'll do it again. Ready? Yeah, you know, it looks even better on this monitor. <laughs> I uh, rejuvenated this monitor and it looks amazing. The colors are just so vibrant. The reds were a little weak on this, uh, but ever since I rejuved it like, a couple years ago, it's been great ever since. And of course, you know, it's a rebuilt monitor. It's a K7000 I have in here. And the tube has slight burn-in from OutRun. It's very faint. It's almost no burn-in, but you can't really tell when you're playing. So, And it's meant for this game. So burn-in is fine as long as it's the same game, in my opinion. But I did do another tube swap, uh, which is going into the gap plus, actually. I didn't do that on camera because I've done a tube swap for a uh, K7000, which is what I used. So let's go right this time, and then left the rest of the way. I gotta remember to do that. This Camino song reminds me of, uh, what's that song? It's by Stevie B. It's like a freestyle song in the 80s. I wanna be the one, that song. <laughs> If you Google it, you'll see. It sounds just like it. Uh, I love those Sega songs. They're so cool. So, Gizmo, what's enhanced about it is that um, it has no music. I don't know if you could tell. It has three additional tracks. Um, two of them are from the 3DS version of Outrun. The author loves that game, so he actually imported it. And the other one is from... Uh, the Turbo Outrun. So it's three additional tracks. Um, it has all these, uh, like right now I'm using a trainer, so you can see on the upper left, there's no time because I selected unlimited time. So what we're doing now is we're going to the, all the endings here to see all of them. 
Uh, it also has grippy tires, which lets you hug the curves really well. And there's another one called off-road tires that if you go off-road, you don't lose speed. Um, in addition, there's no time, you can see any, since there is no time, um, normally it'll flash when you, when you do the checkpoint, see it says lap 116 and 58. So it's in red now because I did it really slow, but if you do it fast and you beat your time, it turns green and it remembers that. And I'll show you later if you want to stick around on the stream, right after this race I'll show you actually. I can go into the settings and show you, it animates and everything, it's amazing. Um, you can select which um, course you want and then it shows you what your times are on them. I should break, I never break in this game. The only gripe I have against this outrun, um, Enhanced, is that he removed miles per hour. So it's only kilometers per hour now, before you were able to change it. Because, you know, we live in the US, so I wanted to have miles per hour, but... Um, it did mess with my game, though. Whenever you shift, I shift around 180 kilometers per hour with the second gear, but I had to readjust when it was miles per hour because it recalculates it. It's no longer that number, so. But it's cool, I mean, you know, it feels like you're in Europe, right? It should be kilometers, so. So Chris, the author, decided to remove that option. Um, I also wanted to still add unlimited, um, you know, gas. So, like, with my daughter, I have to put a, a heavy object onto the pedal because she can't reach it, and then I gotta, or I gotta just stand there and press it for her. So I want an option that's in, like, kids mode or something, where it just automatically presses the gas for you. Uh, he already has automatic on here, so you don't even need to shift it. You can set it to auto, and you don't need to shift it at all. So, stuff like that, you know. That's true, Mike. Uh, kilometers per hour does look cooler because it looks like you're going faster than you really are. <laughs> uh, so, you go up to 293 kilometers per hour, I think is the top speed here. That sounds fast. So you can see, of course, you know, I crashed a couple times. It's still not going to affect me because I put unlimited time. But, I can't enter my initials. That's the, you know, the drawback of using those cheats. <laughs> this part I hate, you can't see where you're going. Oh, those guys are just such bastards. You know, Gizmo, everybody's asking me, no, they are not available in name Because it's a special, because I beta tested it, you can see in the video, in the description, I put a link to the last one I did. It was actually in MAME, but it's a special build of MAME that Chris White supplied to me. So that, you know, and to the other beta testers, so that they can test stuff out. So, it is available in MAME, but it's not to the public. So, I don't know if that helps you out. But it does, that's how we tested it for people that did not have hardware. Um, but I pretty much right away, you know, I was the first guy actually out of... I guess maybe in the world, even Chris didn't have his up and running, but uh, I was the first guy to actually put this game on actual hardware, because it worked theoretically in MAME. And then I burned the ROMs, you know, put them in my machine, and bam, it worked. It was great. So this video right here is pretty much overdue. <laughs> I've been meaning to do this for a while, I just didn't have any time to do it. But now that I have the live stuff set up again, um, it should be a lot easier to, to do live streams now. Yeah, that's true, Mike. That's why I'm doing it, so we can see the endings. You know, if you see, I don't know if you guys know of Tagsta. He's uh, basically an OutRun fiend. He's good at a lot of games, but he's especially good at OutRun. And his machine is gorgeous. Like, he you know, chromed out like everything it. on it. And the pedals. Yeah, this is one of the bad endings too, where the tires fall off. <laughs> so that's B. Uh, I used the GQ4X. Uh, believe it or not, um, something went wrong with it and it died um, recently. So I had to buy a new one. And um, after I bought it, I actually contacted uh, the guys over at Willem 
um, who you know who built it, and they they actually covered it under the warranty and sent me a new one. And they said, yeah, the other one's defective. They sent me a new one, and I had a spare one, so I ended up giving it to my buddy Jason. Um, you know, because he's I'm always bringing stuff to his house and burning stuff for him. But I was like, you know what? Just leave it over there. That way, I don't have to bring it. And every time I go out there, I'll just use it. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, so let me go into the menu and show you these uh, settings. It's pretty cool. So if you go into uh, statistics, and it says uh, best track times, you can actually go in here. Oops, I pressed the wrong button again. There we go. Oh, man, I did it twice. Statistics, where are you? There you go. Track times, you got to press start. Okay, so... You can see down here, I don't know if, yeah, you can see that. Um, it actually says the time down here of what you do. Uh, let me see if I can focus better on that for you guys. Oh no, you can see it pretty good. I'm looking at it through the camera there. Um, so it shows it down here, and what you do is you go left to right. So see how like this guy's moving here? It's going down each one, or like each one. So it tells you what your best time was for each track. You can go back and forth. You can go left, and kind of see, okay, I did 108 there. So, um, and plus while you're playing, when the checkpoint pops up, it shows this time in green if you beat it and in red or pink um, if you don't beat it. And then it shows what the time was underneath that you need to beat. So that's awesome. Um, I'll actually turn on, I could t well, you already saw it before, like the beginning of the video, but um, I had it turned on where it wasn't a limited time and it actually showed you breaking the record or not breaking the record each time you go through the checkpoint. So that has that, and then of course, if I get out of that, you can go to best scores for the new layout or the old layout. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna change it. See right now it says uh, high scores. You press start to advance. Like, I mean, it, it's, it's like he's a genius. Like the way he, he just took the test menu and opened up all this stuff into the real game, this actually shows up during attract mode. So he kind of just extracted that information and then displayed it here. So that's really cool that he does that. So right now you have all the routes. There's no records because obviously I was using cheats to do that just now. Um, so let me go back. I'm going to, let me go to game settings. I'm gonna set it to the old. Let's see. Next to music on, timer, and then settings. Course layout, I'm going to set it to old. And then that'll change the tracks. I believe that a Japanese layout. And then I'm going to go previous. And then you can, under game settings, see it says extra music. So you can modify the board, like there's a jumper you have to desolder and resolder in order to get it to take that bigger chip with all the music on it. But if you don't want to mod your board, you can actually just burn the Enhance Kit and then you set extra music to off and it'll only show you those tracks. So, for example, I'll show you here. I'm gonna to go to, where am I looking here? I'm going to Sound Test. So Sound Test, he split it up into music and sound effects. And the sound effects, by the way, he labeled everything. So, I keep hitting the wrong button here. So instead of saying voice one, voice two, voice three, it actually tells you what it says for each one. And he even added um, get ready, which is the one that you don't hear. Get ready, get ready. That's in uh, Afterburner and it's also in um, Space Harrier. But normally you don't hear that because the, um, the sample rate is too high for the board, but they included it on the ROM. They, you just can't hear it when you press it because you can't physically play it back. So he exported that and re-imported it the proper way to be able to hear it. Get ready. Which is pretty cool. Uh, so let me get out of that. So music, if I go to test music, you can see all the tracks here. So they have the normal ones you, you're familiar with. All right, the splash wave is on there. And of course, my favorite, this is when you end the game. It sounds amazing with the subwoofer if I have it enabled. Um, but anyway, this is a new one here. That's from the, um, I believe it's the 3DS version. This one too. So that's all new. And then here's the last track. 
and that's from uh, Turbo Outrun. So it's cool that he put everything in that. Uh, so that's one of the big differences. But if you disable it, if you go to game settings, it only shows you the first three and then the actual extra ones that you see do not even appear. So you can run this on a stock board if you want to, but again, it's a real simple thing. You just desolder and solder. If you can do a cap kit, you can switch that little jumper. <laughs> oh, let me set it to, did I set it correctly? Uh, oh, actually it's set to uh, the other track, just so we're good to go. So I'm gonna go left the whole time. You'll see the tracks are in different order. Get ready. They should be. Hey, command the line, I'm jealous because I want one of those cabs. <laughs> They're just pretty huge, so that's the only reason I don't have it right now. But uh, my new house, uh, whenever that gets into it, I'm not looking for it probably for like another year or two. Um, I'm probably going to get some sort of walk-in basement with French doors for sure and you know so I can fit in like driving cabs and stuff like that. It's amazing when you get in this hobby and you buy a new house like when I bought this house um, I looked for a place to, I, you know I looked for the amount of rooms it has where the you know school district how close it is to transportation and then of course hey will I fit my arcades in it. <laughs> You know, and it's first, like the realtor looks at you like, you're really deciding if it has a basement or not? I was like, yeah, I need to see if I can get my games in here, up and down the stairs, how hard it is, you know? So now I'm gonna go left. Normally you have those pillars, right? Let's see how the background changed. It's a different board. So this is running the Japanese ROMs, which have different level of stuff. This actually is, is on the right, and it's a different level, but it's so weird seeing it this level right here, which is more difficult in my opinion than the normal one that I'm used to. Different patterns here. So this is level two of these rounds. So yeah, Outrun SP is, Outrun 2 is awesome. <laughs> I have it on the Xbox, the original Xbox. I have um, Outrun 2 and I also have Outrun 2006, I wanna say. It's, they're both great games. I could always do a gameplay on that because since I own the original Xbox, I have it in my 32-inch uh, widescreen uh, Ulix cab. I could always just hook up the controls on the bottom and play it. Because right now it's in uh, digital mode for fighting games. But, uh, you know, you need analog for that. So now here's the other board. different, see? So this one I think comes third in the real version, or the US version. It's a little different, but it's still cool. I don't think the endings are different, I think they're all the same. It's just the uh, levels are just in different orders. It's similar to what they do with Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong, I think, uh, has the pie factory right away. And in the real game, or in our version, the US, I say the real game, the real game is really Japan. In our US version on Donkey Kong, it has, um, you know, the order that everybody's used to, where you have the Pie Factory, which comes up much later. It's kind of cool that he put this in. I love uh, that I can play these uh, alternate tracks. So to me, it's worth it to get it. Um, and it doesn't really cost. You know, considering what you get, it doesn't really cost that much. Um, he always asks that, I think he's doing a little different, where you have to donate, you fill out a form or something with your serial number or version number. I forget what you gotta do, but um, then it lets you download the ROMs, um, you know, for OutRun. But he asks for a donation, and the donation is actually for a charity. It's not for him to make money. It's in a cause that he believes in. I can't remember what it was, but it all goes towards that. So when people ask me, hey, can you burn this for me? I said, I can burn it for you, but you have to donate to this guy. Because <laughs> he worked really hard on this. And honestly, I think COVID, because he was home and you know just got inspired by it, it's very possible that he worked on it because of COVID. Because you know, he was like, hey, I want to work on something fun. Um, I don't think he would have redid the code. He didn't really need to. But he just made it more improved, if you can even believe it. Wow, 
this board is one of my least favorite. It has rocks and trees, and it's really hard to navigate. I've beaten this game, I don't know, four out of like 20 times, maybe. Um, and I've only done it either all the way to the left or all the way to the right. I haven't done the one with the fastest time, which I think is D. I've only done A and E. said this is a Chichiro version. Xbox. I gotta read that in one sec. I'll try and drive here. They also released it on Limburg. Okay, now I've played a Limburg. Uh, my buddy Nando, um, if you guys are out there and know Nando, I know there was a viewer that uh, got into contact. He bought something from my buddy Nando. I lost contact with him. My phone died. And I lost his number, and I kind of remember where he lives, but since he lives in the city, you know, all the houses to me look the same, you know, where he was, so. Congratulations! I need to get in contact with him again. He's the guy who had all the candy cabs. Um, or hopefully he'll just, uh, well, no, even if he texted me, he won't get me because I changed my carrier and everything, so. I did not import my number. It would have cost more money. All right, so command the line, he said, this is a Chichiro version. Uh, Xbox, they also released it on Limburg, PC. It's basically the same cabinet as Naomi, like Crazy Taxi. Oh, that's, you're talking about the version of uh, OutRun 2, SP. Yeah, SP, I just learned this recently, that SP is the better version to have. There's OutRun 2 and OutRun 2 SP. And I believe I learned that from Last Gamer. I don't know if you guys subscribe to him, he's a great channel. He's an Australian guy, Australian bloke, uh, actually who has the biggest arcade in the world, or the greatest arcade he claims, which it pretty much is. He has everything in there. Um, he pretty much, he had like a disaster happen with um, a storm where it took out, the lightning hit his house or something, and it took out like a whole bunch of games. They all died and got fried, but he's, you know, repairing them all and getting back to normal somewhat. But uh, kind of sad, but it's, you know, happens but at least nobody was hurt you know that's the main thing cool now I'm looking at chat just trying to catch up here nice so what uh, game stream do you want to see next after this because um, I am I'm not gonna do it in this stream but in the future I really have to get back into Rolling Thunder I was playing that the other day um, and I was watching my videos, um, and I was like, man, I was really good at that. And, like, I'm not nearly as good. Like, I'm a little rusty, so I have to get back into it and practice. So I might do some streams where I practice a little bit, because I'm trying to go for, not a world record, but I want to beat the game on one on one guy. So first I'm going to aim for one credit, and then I'm going to aim for one guy. So no deaths clear would be awesome to do live on Rolling Thunder. Uh, but I just have to practice a few levels. So what I may do, I don't know if this counts or not, but I may fire up MAME because I have a MAME cab and then maybe use uh, save states and load states just to practice one particular level. Uh, there's The last level is where I, actually no, level 7 or 8 is where I die a lot because the time runs out. So I have to really figure out the patterns and hustle to that level. But I don't know, is that cheating? Or should I just... Uh, play the real game. It'll take longer, <laughs> but I can play the real game, get up to that level, and then figure out the patterns by dying over and over, but still. Yeah, Last Gamer is pretty good. It's, uh, he's a great, uh, he's a great guy too. He's doing this stuff, um, where he's doing some vlogs, and, uh, I watch them. Some of them, I kind of skip through. Uh, it's kind of painful to watch the, uh, the old videos that he did. So. I 
I think Jess technically should be the host. <laughs> he does great with the narration, it's amazing, but uh, he's a little stiff on screen. I think Jess is more natural, so uh, we'll see how it goes. And Jess is his cousin, who's one of the uh, shockers. Everybody thought, like, hey, who's Jess, your friend? What's going on? Does your, why does your wife approve of her? She's always, he's always hanging out with her. It turns out it's his cousin, so that made sense. <laughs> so we got one vote to use MAME to practice. Yeah, I could do that. I mean, I do have a full MAME machine. That's another thing, I want to start doing streams with that too, because I have a lot of fun discovering games. Uh, so what I may do is start doing polls of like, maybe a handful of games that I'm interested in trying. And then, uh, you know, I'll just decide you guys can vote and see. By the way, that latest poll that I sent out with uh, Milestar Games and Gottlieb, you guys really think it's a Qbert so far, that's number one. So we'll see if that's true or not. Name it up. <laughs> what I want to do, actually, I want to play Tron. So what I may have to do, I have a joystick I need to rebuild uh, to change out the restrictor for Tron. So I may do that soon. That's like low-hanging fruit on the channel. And then once I get that modded, we can do that. Um, I may actually change the format of the show too to include last credit. Like I know uh, my buddy John, you guys watch John's Arcade. You know, he does the mailbag thing at the end or viewer mail. So I've been really thinking about it. You know, I think I want to do last credit at the end where I play a game. You know, um, I'll have like a separate episode. Those episodes are like maybe three minutes long. Um, you know, I basically just play a game with one quarter, no continues, and see how far I get. So I think I can maybe end uh, the show, or every show, with those last credit videos. So I gotta see, you know, and then of course, you guys can email me, instead of asking questions, you can email me and say what game you want to see next. So, something I'm thinking of doing. But again, you know, once I get that video card that I'm talking about, um, you know, my piece is going to be like unstoppable when it comes to rendering. Uh, so it'll be so fast and it'll be really good. It's pretty good now. It's just like 98% good and then that last 2% where it bottlenecks <laughs> can be so infuriating sometimes. You're trying to work on something and it's just, you got to wait. Uh, and I like doing all kinds of special effects. So. Kind of painful sometimes. I'm running a Ryzen 7, by the way. Uh, my system can take a Ryzen 9. I just decided not to go there just yet. I'm going to wait till the new uh, generation of CPUs comes out, and then I'll upgrade to a Ryzen 9. But uh, I have a 3070, right? no, 3700. And it runs great. Super fast. And it's fully solid state, so super fast to do. Just, you know, the video cards just, I don't want to pay those crazy prices. That's what happened. <laughs> so I'm glad I waited. Now all my friends have spent like money on the 2080 Ti, and the 3070 supposedly is twice as fast as that card. So, and it's only 500 bucks versus, what was it, 1200 for the 2080? Crazy. Patience is a virtue. This traffic is really annoying. You can turn off the traffic, by the way, in the trainer. Um, I might do that. I might try to finish the game by driving and just set traffic to off, just to make it easier. So, I don't know 
if this is in the real game, I forget, but there's like a little indicator on the right that shows the map and which which uh, way you've taken. I think this is the last board before it finishes. The last level before I beat the game here. Yeah, see this is now, it's funny that we're doing this board. This is a board I've never seen. It's probably from the Japanese version. It's similar to the, to the one on the left. US version. It's very different. It has dust and everything. Just like that sandboard. It's actually really cool looking. Hey Z Cowboy, I'm about to read your comment. I just uh once I beat the game here, I'll uh, read it. This is it right here. Yeah, Tron's a good one. Uh, I do have the spinner. My main panel has everything on it. Like, you know, it was a Franken panel at the time. Where I have a spinner, I have a flight joystick on that. Um, I have two dual joysticks for each player so that you can play Smash TV together. That's before I owned the Smash TV. Yeah, this is a good, this is the best ending right here. So this one's the C ending, where Genie comes out and it's all these, uh, you know, women for the guy, and then the chick gets kind of mad. <laughs> cool. So I think I did A, B, C. I did A, B, C, and D. Now I just got to do E. That's the last one here. Let me just catch up on chat here. Micro, I'm a chatterbox. I'd love to do videos. I got rid of all three of my cabinets back in the 2000s, though, so I have no firepower. <laughs> Command the line roll. I'm kind of the same boat. Bought the 2700X on super sale, waiting for the proper 4000. Yeah, that's a smart thing to do. It's always good to wait. I've done that my whole PC life. Um, believe it or not, I've gone... Unless you consider my MacBook that I got a long time ago. Um, that was an i7, but... Um, I did, what the heck did I do? I actually had AMD the whole time. And before that, even when Intel's were like back in 46s, I had the Cyrix. Cyrix was another company competing with Intel. I had the 46DX40. So at the time it was the uh, 46DX, uh, no, sorry, it was a 46DX33, but then the Cyrix came out with the 40 megahertz, not gigahertz, megahertz. And that thing was super fast. So I was always an adopter for the underdog, and uh, at the time, when I spent a lot of money and I was disappointed with the Bulldog, I bought the um, Sabertooth Asus 990FX chipset, and I put in the, uh, I believe it was the 8130 or 8150, I can't remember, but it was the, uh, the Black Edition uh, Athlon, I think it was AMD Athlon FX chip, it was the FX series. So I think it was 8150, and my brother had the 81, 8350, which is more powerful. But um, I had that thing overclocked. I was actually using that, I want to say two years ago, I was using that, um, you know, up to the very, like, end of its life. And I, I'm still going to use it, actually, in a main cab. I'm going to upgrade my main to it. But um, that was running at, I had it overclocked at 4.3 gigahertz, and I was able to edit videos and everything on it. Then I upgraded, uh, <clears throat> what did I upgrade to? The 1800X, that's the Ryzen 7. And then about a year later, uh, I upgraded to the 3700X, which I have now. The only reason I didn't upgrade to the 9, actually, it was pretty much similar in price, only a little bit different, um, was because of my power supply. I didn't feel like, you know, power supplies right now are super expensive because there's a shortage of them. So I'm waiting for that to finish hopefully before these cards come out um, because I definitely need to upgrade because I'm not running that extra connector that you need for the 9. My power supply just doesn't have it. It's 650 you know for the uh, wattage 650 power supply but still does not have the connector I need so but right now I'm running you know it does scream it's really really fast. Um, I can run all my games on max believe it or not but they're older games uh, let's see. I think I missed some chat here. 
Easy Cowboy wrote, um, that's how the funded the engineering for the new card. Yeah, I guess you were just responding to what I was saying, just waiting. Yeah, it's better to wait. Uh, memory, I remember spending, when I got my 1800 Ryzen 7, I spent $400 on 32 gigs of RAM. $400. <laughs> that was the most expensive part. To me, that was crazy that the RAM was more than the actual CPU or the video card. So, um, I got 32 gigs because, you know, tax refunds come. I was like, you know what, let me just do it. Um, it was screaming fast, it was great, um, but then um, I ended up, because I was going to take that RAM and actually put it in the new system, but then RAM was so cheap that I decided to use my older 8150 FX chip, put that in the, main, in the main machine instead of the, I think I have the Phenom 2 currently. It's, you know, it's great, but it's a little old and dated. So I wanted to put that in with 32 gigs of RAM, take that RAM, just put it there, and then I ended up buying... Uh, 32 gigs of additional RAM for this new system I have now for the 3700X because it was like dirt cheap. I would say it was maybe a hundred bucks for the same amount of RAM, <laughs> maybe 120. It was it was dirt cheap. So especially when you get packages, it's a lot cheaper. So I'm just uh, answering your comments here. Uh, let's see what do we have. Uh, AZ Cowboy says that has a Space Harrier feel. You're talking about uh, OutRun? Yeah, I mean, they're all the same chipset. You know, Space Harrier, um, Afterburner 2, and OutRun all have the same 68,000 processor, dual processor in there. Um, yeah, I should do a Sega Knight, right, Gizmo? Then Namco, then... Yeah, I should do... I definitely am going to do a Namco one because... Or Midway. Midway slash Namco because I have... Let me see, one, two, three, four, five. I'll have six Midway Namco cabinets or PCBs to play once I get this uh, gapless going with all, with all the other stuff in there, including Galaga 88. And then I also have access to MAME, which has that arrangement, which is a great game. I mean, I love that game too. So, let's see, uh, Gizmo, you're also asking, what do you think of a PC-based arcade? Uh, Techno Parrot, is Techno Parrot, that sounds familiar, I'm trying to remember what that is, just fill in, you know, remind me. Techno Parrot, what is that? It's not going to make me Google it. Techno, oh, by the way, Thunderblade is another one I did not mention, that's the same, System 16. Techno parrots. It's a software package allowing you to run selected PC-based arcade titles on your own hardware. Okay, is that, um, maybe you're thinking of, uh, Star Wars, right? Did it Star Wars, um, pod, battle pod? Somebody kind of cracked the code on that. Does that run on Techno Parrot? And it lets you run PC-based stuff? Because it is PC-based to begin with. Yeah, I think I think that's what that is. I'm pretty sure. Um, I know there's um, some uh, God, what is it? There, there's some hardware like some shoot 'em ups like Raiden, uh, the later Raiden games that are that run on PC based um, systems, and um, there's an emulator for that. I can't remember what the name of it is though. But yeah, I guess I could run that stuff. You know, I do have the capability to stream from my PC um, actual games, which I've done in the past. I've done little tests here and there for, like, Team Fortress. Um, I actually was going to do some TF2 gameplay, which I loved ever since it came out. It's an older game, but it's really great. You know, and I have the maximum graphics on, and it works fine. Um, but, you know, the bots basically are killing the game, and I couldn't stand. Like, I get in a game to, ready to stream, and then tons of bots were in there just cheating and stuff, and I was like, forget this. I'm not doing it. <laughs> It'd be cool to have a viewer one, though, just with a private server. That'd be nice. Let me just grab a... Uh...
Okay, I'm back. Wow, it's like two o'clock. All right, so I've been streaming for about an hour. That's not bad. So AZ Cowboy saying, has the games currently supported? What do you mean by that? It's a statement, a question. I can't understand what you're writing there. <laughs> oh, really? So Gizmo, I gotta check that out because I'm in love with the Metal Slug series. Um, I'm a big fan of the guys. I can't remember the team that worked on it, but they did Cyberlip as well. Uh, they did some other game that somebody suggested I do a last credit on. I can't remember what it was. It's like some sort of beat em up game. Um, but I do have the series I started collecting for Neo Geo. I have Metal Slug 2 and 3 at the moment. But I have played the new one. There's one on Steam. Is that the one you mean, maybe? There's one on Steam. Uh, it's a new Metal Slug that I bought. It was like, I don't know, five or six bucks. And uh, it's a whole new levels and everything, and it's pretty cool. It's just like the arcade game, just new levels. I used to use the steering wheel. I have it in my closet, but it's an old interface. It worked with my older PC, which had the joystick port. Um, but it, I don't think that will work with my PC I have in there now. So no, I don't have a steering wheel. And if I did it, I'd have to clamp it. All right, sorry about that. My significant other came home, so. She's like, when are you coming up, going to bed? I was like, yep, it's two o'clock. So I'm just uh, wrapping up by talking to you guys real quick. Uh, let's see. Okay, do you use the steering wheel with your main pad? If so, how do you differentiate between games like OutRun with the 270 degree wheel, that's actually a good question. And ones like pole position. Um, I believe MAME makes up for it. Um, like I have a spinner on there and you can actually buy an attachment, Groovy Game Gear sells it, that you can actually take your spinner off and then you attach this little mini steering wheel on there which rotates 360. But without run, MAME just knows when you get to the end, it doesn't let you go right anymore, it stops, you know. So, uh, you can kind of play with the spinner if you wanted to in OutRun if you want an analog experience or you can use the joystick which it's actually better to use the spinner you have better control but um, people who have built those cabinets I believe the newer version of the MAME <clears throat> like I just said you know accounts for that where it knows not to go past a certain point or if you're playing something like championship sprint you know you can just spin the wheel and it goes around in circles so um, yeah so that's that but back in the day I remember people would actually hack it where um, they would set it to not go past, they'd, they'd edit some sort of uh, line in like the uh, source code and they would actually just edit it to not go past a certain point but then I think they just built that into MAME now. But yeah, it knows automatically, so. So ideally, so it works with all games, right? You probably want a steering wheel that can, um, just like a spinner can just go indefinitely so you can actually rotate for games like pole position where it rotates forever it would work with pole position and then it would not work um, if you have the opposite so like if you had a steering wheel that was limited like a logitech you can't really play pole position like you can try but you know i haven't actually tried it but i'm pretty sure that if it doesn't calibrate collect correctly at the beginning um you try turning right, and if you turn left, it's going to think you're still in the center, and it's going to screw everything up. But I think with the spinner-type wheel, where it spins indefinitely, you can actually play OutRun just fine on it. Chase HQ, you can play all those. Because there's guys, um, Tagsta is the guy, just uh, Sean Tag. He actually um, built a, he has an OutRun cabinet that's beautiful with the original stuff, but he actually switched, uh, he has a PC interface on it as well, which he connects every now and then, and it has all driving games on it. <laughs> So he's able to play all the games. I gotta ask him if pole position, how it runs on that outrun cab, if he has any issues with it, or if he had to patch it, or if it's just natively supported like that. <laughs> I'll tell her, Mike. She said, "Tell her we said thanks for loaning you to us." Yeah, um, you know, like I said, you know, the kids are at um, at their aunt's house, uh, so you know, she went out with the girls today. I was like, "Yes, I can do stuff," and of course. Instead of playing games and streaming like I should have been doing, like I was, you know, like, yeah, I have freedom to do it. Um, I was fixing kitchen tiles and replacing them in the kitchen. It took longer than normal. 
So uh, that ate up most of my day. <laughs> so that's why I'm doing this so late. Oh, you posted a link? I don't think it lets you post links, uh, Easy Cowboy. I have to, let me see if I can um, log in. Hang on, see if I can enable it. Nope, I think the link got blocked, so I'm not sure how to undo that. Yeah, I'm going to Google it, because I already have it in my uh, history. I just tried uh, Googling it real quick, so I'll check it out. TechnoParrot compatibility list, and I'll uh, see, but my PC can definitely run it for sure. So if you guys have any more questions, let me know. I'm probably going to be ending this soon. Um, probably the next game... You know what I might do? I might do something fun. I might just do that Milestar board. Because it has some pretty unique games on there um, that I'm not going to use. But um, it's just kind of cool seeing them. Oh, it's on GitHub. Yep. Nice. Uh, Russell Gibson? Actually, yeah, I have on mine. Um, it's only because it's a hardware issue. So on mine, the pedal uh, wasn't calibrated. So I wasn't able to push down correctly on, you know, to, to enter my initials. It would let me turn the steering wheel, but then I couldn't, I press the gas pedal, nothing would happen. So if that's the case, you need to go into your settings menu. Um, I can show you right now, actually. I'm not going to calibrate it, but if you go into your settings menu here, there's a, uh, is it output test? I can't remember what it is. Let me just look here. Input test, probably. Yeah, see here? If I turn my steering wheel, see how it moves? So that's basically, it has to be set to like 8H or something like that. It's 82H, something like that. It's actually in the manual what it should be set to. So if you go and Google like outrun manual, you download the PDF, it'll tell you what these should be set to. Uh, so like right now I'm pressing the brake see how it's moving so you have to set it when it's off and you're not pressing it It should be set to around 22 H or so this might be a little off, but in the manual I'll tell you exactly what it is same thing with accelerator You know you press it down Accelerator should be around I can't remember if it's 30 One C E you know it varies, but if it's set like let's say it's set to like here uh, that means when you press it, it's not going all the way to the end. It only goes up to like right here and it doesn't press and register. So that's probably a hardware issue. Could need lube, could be a couple things. But that's how you do it. You got to calibrate it. And then once it saves it, um, well, it doesn't really save it, but once you adjust, there's a pot in the back that you can adjust it to. So when you look at it on the screen, it's set to that and then you're good to go. And then, of course, the shifter doesn't have an analog. It's actually a micro switch in there that switches it. Which I need to rebuild. i got to rebuild mine. It's a little floppy. It needs a new spring in there. Yeah, I might do that, uh, Mike. Um, we'll see. What I might do... I mean, I do... I don't know. i got to see, because I, I just built this main cabinet. Um, but the vertical stuff... The vertical cabinet... I knew it was going to happen. Like, I put the, the art on it, and I put the PC inside, and now it's so fun to play that I don't want to finish the rest of it. I just play it. <laughs> but uh, I have to finish that cabinet, because um, that lets you play a lot of good games. But what I might do, maybe I'll practice on um, on uh, the Raspberry Pi. You know, it's a little bit laggy, but this joystick, like, I tried playing it, I think at the Cradle of Aviation, they have a Rolling Thunder with a Wyco joystick on there, and... Or some people say Wicko, but um, yeah, that was a leaf switch four-way, and it was not the same. Like, I kept dying and dying. Like, my joystick is just so precise. That Atari logo joystick is amazing. All right.
Well, that about does it, I guess. Um, let me see if I can get some, you know what? I think I forgot to brand my own uh, stream here. <laughs> let me put in the logo. There we go. There's the subscribe thing. If you aren't subscribed, you probably all are. Um, you know, just think of doing that, but definitely hit the like button if you can. Um, I'm starting to get into new categories now because I did hit 4,000 uh, subscribers. So for whatever reason, I'm in a different uh, algorithm and there's a lot of people joining all of a sudden. Like I'm getting tons of uh, subscribers now. I'm getting a lot of likes. I'm getting more views. Um, again, you know, I kind of disabled a lot of the monetization for the mid-roll ads. Um, I never officially said that in any of my videos till now, <laughs> but, uh, I don't know if you've noticed that, but they drive me crazy on other people's stuff where I get it. There's mid-roll ads, but you can actually set where they go. And the AI is pretty horrible where like, they'll be talking about something and then bam, it'll just go right into an ad. And it's very disruptive to get back into what you were listening to. So again, I just disabled all of them. So I have the ones at the beginning because they force you kind of to do it because that's the other thing. If you don't monetize your stuff, there's a, there's a chance they could shut down your uh, channel. That's what I heard because they're not making any money on you. So why should they give you free access? So it's kind of, of a bummer. But um, so what I do is just, the you know, the beginning and the end. That way, you know, you just click on the skip at the beginning and then watch the video. And then you could always just exit. You don't have to watch the last one if you don't want to, you know. So it gives you a little more flexibility, but definitely all like 200 plus videos I have, I, you know, like I had to go back and just manually take them all out, but I got that all done finally. Um, but there is something I'll announce now. We're probably going to, I talked a little bit about Arcade Thursdays with friends of mine. We're probably going to do a new show uh, called uh, Delusional's Roundtable where or Dell's round table probably will abbreviate it and uh it's basically these guys we all get together and it's kind of like the greatest hits where you know we just talk about crap that is interesting to us like you know uh we have people from like Kentucky from Arizona from uh Las Vegas from Virginia you know um New Hampshire Massachusetts like all my friends are from different parts of the you know the U.S. And they talk about um, experiences like, I'll ask questions like, hey, you know, what was your first arcade experience? Like, what arcade was around you? What was it called? And then we'll get stuff by like, you know, Time Out, Aladdin's Castle. You know, they're all different everywhere you go. So it's kind of cool hearing their stories on what they do and how they first got into it. And what first, you know, we're all different ages too. So what may have been great, you know, some people love Ninja Turtles because they're younger. But... Then you have the Golden Age guys like me that love, like, you know, Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, stuff like that. More the classics. So it's kind of cool. It's a great conversation. Um, I've been recording them, you know, with everybody's permission, of course. And then I just have to put them all together and edit. It's kind of maybe like a podcast, more kind of like that kind of format. But uh, what's really neat is that um, we have a lot of, like, inventions. Like, uh, you know, Mike is working on a 96 and one and stuff. Um, new schematics for that so he's showing us hey you know I just did this and he's showing us everything he's working on and with the schematics in front of him he actually creates schematics for him it's just amazing you know his brain is just he's so brilliant and uh, everybody else gives him ideas and you know so it's really good we feed off of each other we fix games and we do all that stuff you know live in a zoom but uh, I think it'd be cool we talked about it I said hey you know this would be cool to share with the viewers if they want to see it you know us working on stuff um, and it's a little different uh, where we we strictly stay like video game focused whether it's video games arcades every now and then we'll talk about something else but I try not to put those in there um, because you know the channel's about arcades right you want to stick with the subject you don't really want don't want to talk about you know oh yeah you know it's COVID oh how horrible is that I don't really want to talk about that I want to have fun you're you're doing this to get away from all that <laughs> so uh, yeah so that's where I'm going with that so so Mike's saying Dell and I are in the same time zone, but I live in Aussie hours, so I live so live stream is welcome. Cool. Yeah, you're like a vampire. You're like me. There was at one point where I was working so much, um, you know, just different hours, alternate hours because of COVID, that I felt like a vampire. I'd be sleeping during the day and working at night. Um, every now and then I'd do an overnight, which I haven't done in years. But um, you know, when you have live shows and stuff, sometimes it requires you to do that. Um, 
so yeah, it's hard to snap out of that too, especially when you're when you have four days off. It's so easy to stay up till five o'clock in the morning, <laughs> especially on our arcade Thursdays when we're working on stuff. And then Friday, you just sleep all day. It sucks, you know. Getting up early, bringing your kid to daycare, and then going back to sleep. It sucks. Yeah, so Dell's Roundtable. Um, we're... Let me think. I have an episode almost in the bag. What I have to do is I have to do raps on it. So, you know, in technical terms, rap is when you... Um, not when you're rapping like a rapper, but um, you just film raps where I'd say, Hey, guys, welcome to the arcade. You know, here's some snippets of, you know, I have to kind of do the intro on that and then actually show the footage and then cut away to me talking, kind of narrating it a little bit because it's kind of all over the place. Um, and then, of course, the outro where I show, like, you know, the um, Twitter stuff, the subscribe stuff, and also the end page. So, uh, but it should be pretty good slam dunk. The only problem that I will run into is probably approving it because, you know, it's almost like having board members when other people are involved. Um, I usually try to unlist it, you know, set it as unlisted, send the link to those guys and then see if it's okay to air it because some people may not, they may be like, oh, I don't like how I look or I don't like what I said or I don't want to share those semantics. Those are kind of secret. I'm still working on that project and I don't want to announce it yet. So, um, yeah, but just so you know, some of the some of the people we've had on, we've had uh, Arcade Jason has been hanging out with us a little bit. Um, he was talking about his um, his uh, pie boards, you know, his pole position pies or um, pie position, I think he's calling it. Um, we talked to, he went on a couple times with that. Um, Jeff Kinder, you know, he's a good friend of mine. He's actually near me. Uh, he's been talking about his Tron restoration. Um, and then hanging out with us um, and it's amazing some of the stuff he showed he showed us these I don't know if I'm gonna air it, but he showed us pictures of um, You know one of his uh, ex-girlfriends that he used to hang out with all the time. She had this amazing arcade and uh, I don't know if it'd be appropriate to put that on the air uh, To everybody to see because it was it was pretty mind-blowing But um, you know, I don't know what his relationship is with her and I don't know if he wants that really broadcast to everybody But it was a pretty amazing arcade um, that had like rows and rows and rows and the warehouse and she had just everything. It was just great to see. But, uh, you know, I'll ask him. Maybe we'll need permission from her. Maybe I can contact her. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But, um, yeah, so anyway, I'm going to end this video. Um, subscribe if you haven't, but most importantly, just hit the like button and the bell icon. Um, bell icon is important because when I do a live in the future, you'll see it and you'll get notified. Some of you already have gotten that now, so... Cool. So last comment here I'm going to get from Mike, which is, uh, well, I'll do two of them. So Gizmo saying, has anyone ever made a new game within the last few years to run on an old 68,000 arcade board? Um, not really sure. I don't think so. If they did, it's probably emulated where they modified. There's probably hacks out there for, um, I know there's a hack. God, what did I play the other day? It was like an outrun hack for like one of the consoles where it was outrun battle or something like that and it was like the outrun game i think it was for sega it was called outrun battle i'd never heard of it and i think it was just a hack so it'd probably be software based not hardware based and mike's saying COVID means we work all the time i've never been able to go days until it's mostly gone thanks for the videos though they keep us going and then heath hey heath what's going on see you thursday brother yep heath is one of the guys that's um on our round table or our Arcade Thursdays. <laughs> um, so um, you'll see him probably once I get all this edited and then of course clear it with uh, everybody. You know, I'll probably give them a link like I said. They can say, okay, that's cool. Go ahead and make it live and then I'll make it live for everybody. So, uh, but we have a lot of fun with that. Heath is actually a pinhead. Like he knows all kinds of stuff with pinball and he repairs pinballs uh, for a living basically. He's like, uh, I'll, I'll, I mean, nobody's Buffett, but actually he's friends with Buffett, and that's how we met him. But uh, he is a younger guy, different generation, um, who gives us really cool insights, really funny. Um, of course, I'm giving all his compliments. His head's getting huge. But, uh, but you know, he talks about um, repairing all these games, and it's he's a really good asset. So everybody has a specialty in the round table. So Mike's the engineer, and then we have Heath with the pinball stuff. Then we have Buffett. Buffett's been on, like almost every time last time so he chimes in about monitors and other stuff and other games so it's pretty good we have a lot of good people on there so anyway i'm rambling i'm going to end this broadcast let me head over to my computer 
I will just put a couple more stuff like Instagram and of course um, I'm on Twitter as well at Dell's Arcade. You can check me out there. I'm going to put up the end page and then we'll end this, uh, this stream here. So leave in the comments if you want to see, um, I'll just give it a homework assignment to you guys. Leave in the comments what you want to see in my next uh, video, what game you want to see on MAME because I'm going to do some MAME games where I just go through a few that you guys suggest. So let me know. Cool. So, all right, guys. Take care.